This is the Chrysler voltage limiter. I guess this one is maybe years 62 to 73 or something like that. I don't know, but they're in the dashboard and they bring the voltage for usually the fuel gauge and the temperature gauge, they bring it down to 5 volts, not 12, because those gauges use 5 volts. So this little guy is uh, underneath, he's you know, on the back of the uh, instrument cluster, sometimes kind of close to the um, fuel gauge and the temperature gauge, bring it down to 5 volts from 12. This one is out of a uh, 67 Plymouth Fury and I was driving along and I noticed that um, that the temperature gauge and the, and the fuel gauge pegged. They went up all the way. They were pegged higher than they've ever been before. And I remember this happening before and basically it's a malfunction of this little guy. Um, they make replacements. Um, they also, I've seen online, I've seen um, solid state replacements, um, which is probably a good idea. The, the little connectors on the outside kind of vary a little bit, but uh, I pried mine open and found that it is important to have a good source of ground on your voltage limiter on your Mopar Chrysler voltage limiter and the source of ground helps that little heater those, that little coil wrapped around there is a heater and it heats up the bimetal strip and then opens up the contact points and kind of brings the average down to about 5 volts where it should so when you test it if you test your Chrysler, Mopar, Dodge, Plymouth, Imperial voltage limiter, it's not the voltage regulator, it's not what uh, keeps the battery charged, tells the alternator what to do, this is not that, it's, it's a little guy, it's a voltage limiter, and um, you can put it in series with a battery and a light, 12 volt light bulb, you know like a tail light bulb, and uh, it should flash. But if the bulb lights up bright like it did with this one, you know you're getting 12 volts through it and it's not functioning properly. So what I discovered is that it gets ground for the, for the bimetal, the little heater, it gets ground by touching the outside so it's just kind of wrapped around and then it's kind of pressed on and that wraps around. And then so getting a ground connection is very important. So I'm going to put this back together and test it with, uh, with ground and we'll see what we get. It works in conjunction with a capacitor that helps to level out the uh, switching between uh, 0 and 5 volts or whatever it's the capacitor just helps to level it out level out the voltage and make it uh, make so that your gauges don't uh, jump around so to test your Chrysler voltage limiter um, you have positive 12 volt battery hooked up to the double connector and then the negative for the 12 volt battery is hooked up to the outer the outer casing of the Chrysler voltage limiter and then I also have more this is the same thing this is connected to ground and then I connect it up to ground and then out of that connector I run it through a 12 volt light bulb and if it flashes, you know it's testing properly. Because what it's doing is it's opening up and closing that bimetal strip. The uh, little heater coil 
wrapped around the outside the bimetal strip heats up and then uh, the bimetal um, warps it actually changes shape and then it opens those points up it opens up that connection and disconnects the bulb and then it cools down and then closes up again and then makes a connection and then heats up just like uh, just like a flasher just like a flasher in your car but uh, a little more accurate and um, and uh, it's bringing it down to an average hopefully of about 5 volts from 12 to 5 and 5 volts again is what your gauges want usually your temperature and your um, fuel gauge so this one's out of a 67 Mopar